I'm going to take a 77 year old Varney locomotive that looks like this and I'm going to try to make it look like this. Follow me on my journeys. Welcome back to another edition of Classic Model Trains. I'm Ron. Today we're working on a Varney F3 Powered A, Powered B unit. This one show, first showed up in my I Bought 21 Locomotive sight unseen. Will they run? This one, these guys, they, they didn't run. They, I mean, look at them. They looked hammered. They, are, they, they were hammered. They really were. I found this Burlington scheme right here that I really liked that they used from 1944 to 1970 on their F3As and Bs, so I decided to kind of go that route with it. How about a little history on the Varney Model Train Company? The company was founded by Gordon Varney in 1936 out of Chicago, Illinois. Varney's main significance to the model railroad community was his early advocacy in HO scale models. Starting in the 1930s, Varney was one of the first ones that started using pressure die-casted metal zinc parts with a metal called Zamek. Zamek? Zymek. Spelled Z-A-M-A-K. Zamek? Sure. Varney was one of the first in the model train industry to use plastic parts also. They were doing this as early as 1940 using a cellulose acetate plastic called Tenite. Varney, along with Mantua Metal Products, you know them guys by their other name, T Tyco. These guys were the premier HO scale model railroad manufacturers from 1945 until 1955. Between 1945 and 1949, Varney manufactured this die cast F3 EMD locomotive in two versions. One that had two powered trucks inside of it and one that only had one powered truck inside of it. These locomotive bodies featured high pressure zinc die cast parts and they had a lot of detail to them, especially for that time. The F3 was also made available as a B unit using the exact same casting as the A unit. So, you know, they looked really close. They were like, yeah, it looked good. B units were also offered in either the powered or unpowered versions. The F3 was driven by a Pittman five pole DC-60 electric motor. And it also came with precision scale trucks. $19. 75 cents was the price back then for either the powered A unit or the powered B unit. The dummy A's, dummy B's set you back $7.50. Adjusted for inflation, 1922 prices, $325.66. Oh Jesus, that's for the powered A and B's. The dummy ones, they'll set you back $123.67. And you think model railroading is expensive now. Oh my, you know, almost $20 for a locomotive in 1945. That, that's a lot of money. That's why I run these numbers just to kind of put it in perspective for you. Spendy, you know, yeah. Gordon Varney sold the company in 1960 to Saul Kramer of Lifelike. And the company was moved to Baltimore, Maryland. These old Varneys have been gracing my shelf display layout here for the last four or five months. They finally got their turn underneath the old uh, mechanics wrench here. Let's get started on this video so you can get a little closer look at them. So this is what it looks like before we get ready to take it apart. It's actually got some really nice details on it. It's got separate hand railings coming up through here. No front coupler, that's unfortunate. This paint job, of course this was a kit back in the day, so somebody, somebody hand painted this on there. Can't believe it's still got all of its steps. Here's that Varney motor right there. One power truck up in here. Here's that B unit. It's got grab irons all the way across it. Three portholes on the A. I'm hoping that some detail comes out from behind this screen. I'm thinking that maybe it's got just too much paint in it and it hid some stuff. Oh yeah, there it is. This has got a lot of weight in it and the top comes out. And I wonder once I get this unscrewed if this top's gonna come out. So this is kind of the before shots of them. Oh, you can kind of see through this screen right there. There's the detail I was talking about wanting to see. It's missing its driveline 
Oh, these trucks are, this is an eight wheel drive B. This one is not. This is only a two wheel drive A. Well, that's unfortunate. Now that we've cast our peepers on this thing, I guess now is just as good a time as any to start taking it apart. See, look how heavy, feel how heavy this is. Pass this right here, pass this around to that guy in the back. He never gets to see. My goodness, I should put this on a scale. One pound, 1 1.6 ounces. Pretty impressive, sure. Put all these pieces up for the B unit. 1.10 ounces, and that's, that's a lot of stuff going down the road. The whole thing together is 2.12 ounces, yeah. Two different era of trucks here. This is on the B unit, this one's bolted shut. This A unit, this thing is just, it's out here flapping in the wind. One screw up underneath here. We'll take the body off the full metal frame. That comes, that comes right out. I don't think this headlight has any, there's no insulation left on that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, the motors are different. This one's got the commutator at the front. This one's got it at the back. You can see this one is larger in diameter than this one right in here. Yo, it's physically larger all around. My, oh, I bet you these probably won't even, they won't hook up well together. These motors are gonna perform differently. One's gonna run faster than the other. That's just a guarantee. Look how they put the knuckles on. It's just got a cotter pin in there with this dip in the frame. These trucks are bolted in. A couple bolts there and a couple bolts up over in here. It's like this pickup wire is just soldered into this front truck. Take that truck off. Well, we can really get some access to these bolts right there. Side frames come off. There's screws right inside here. Look at that. Full metal side frames. Tapped. Brass screws. That comes off. Wheels come out. Man, there's some little pieces in here. This brush holder sitting on the top right up in here. If we loosen up these springs here and here, I think this we get them out of a butt, you know, they're not under spring pressure. So they shoot across the room, you know. This here top screw, and we can take off that spring plate. Oh, this stuff is filthy. Here's an insulator that's holding our springs, plus the front pickup for the truck right there. Very interesting. And I believe if I take this back screw out, that magnet has got some... It's got some magnetism to it. I mean, it's good. To, oh man, man. Top of this motor come out. And it's partially locked into this brass up here in the front of the commutator. Oh, speaking of commutators, look at that filth. How many poles is this? This back armature bearing block was sitting right up in here. Worked on taking these off. Hold the bolt. Take these brass nuts off and we can get the frame out of there. Get it ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. There is a C-clip holding that drive line in. I'm sure it's been knurled over just a bent over just a little bit. Now, this is one of those, you know, I got it. I'm a little nervous because it's not like I can just run anywhere and pick this up, you know. Oh, will this drive line come out? Yeah, look at the gunk on that. Holy moly. I can get inside here take this bolt out it's put together kind of backwards I have to say oh sure it just pries off it's wrapped around the axles more screws in here truck side frame screws all this stuff is brass too oh it's amazing this guy here I've got my concerns that it ain't going to come apart unless I pull these wheels off these axles because I don't see any lines on it where the casing is put together. So this is going to have to be worked on as a unit. Very, 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 very filthy in there. I want to get this powered B unit taken apart so I can get this frame soaking in the ultrasonic cleaner, get these side frames put together. It's, it's a little bit different than the other one. We got these screws underneath here in order to get to where we want to go. Oh, they're even loose. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gear drive. Sure. Oh yeah. Look at that. Holy moly. Little drive shaft come out of there. See, then we can get to these screws here now real nice. Spend a lot of time ultrasonic cleaning all these things here. I suppose this back one's going to work just about the same. Pop these two screws out. Look at that, the whole bottom of the truck just comes apart. Front and rear is the same. Nice, got that drive line right there. This one here has got a ground, ground wire going to the chassis. 
So the motor, this brush over here must be powered off of the wheels that come up through this direction. Take this screw out right under here for the top of this gear case. I believe that's going to come off. That guy, there's a there's one of those spacers. They just keep falling out. So there's one screw under here, and then the magnet screw on the back side screws into the top of that gear case. So once we do all that, then we're able to take that upper gear case off. Then we can work on cleaning this motor by hand. We're not going to ultrasonic clean that. This is just a fiber truck, upper truck mount right there, insulated. Okay, yeah. Lower one just comes off. Then we can get in there and pop these screws for these truck side frames. So there, there's the B unit, all stripped down. Here's some parts right here. Got the motor. So that's all the juicy stuff out of that. This collection here, ultrasonic cleaning time. Freezer baggie, get all of our pieces parts in there. That'll lay in the bottom and just get whooped right up. After several hours of disassembly and some ultrasonic cleaning, a little detailing with a brush, this is what all of our major components look like. Now that I've got them stripped down, I'm gonna get them prepped for paint. So here's all of our parts. So this is the power truck right here. This portion is the back. The motor frame is right here. So we're gonna put this pivot bar in, this lower motor frame, and then this spacer, this spacer that likes to fall out. I believe it was just sitting up in this neck of the woods. And we've got this screw right here that's gonna come in from the bottom and hold all this together in one piece if we do everything right. I wanna make sure that the motor, this lower armature bracket is straight, square, flush, perfect with the world. No skeletons in this closet. Crank this bugger down. Cause you don't want that loosening up. Our pivot bar still pivots. We got our spacer plate hiding out right up in there. Now the motor, this armature bushing that's at the front, it's going to lock in underneath of this. And then the next one comes in, locks in on the top. We got this bushing plate right here. No thrust washers. Can you believe it? I'm gonna put the short ones down, armature shaft in, slide the top plate in, and then roll this front one together. Our magnet, it's got a U-shape in it where the bolt goes through. So we put that down like this, get our fine little brass screw, put this in, and this is what's going to hold our motor assembly completely together. Tighten this up. There, now our motor's all put together. Up in the front up here, there's a wick down inside there. So that's always good for holding oil and it will keep this front armature bushing oiled up for quite some time. Well, they never put it here in the back where it's, you know, more important. Pick up this back armature bushing, get a little juice in there. Here's our brushes. Everything got cleaned up earlier. This brush plate right here, non-conductive. Is this being a hassle? Oh yeah. These little springs, they got a little angle of the fedangle right there. Only one seems to be enjoying falling out. Screw this in, making sure everything's stay straight and square. Get our brushes up into place, and then we'll just take these springs and fold them back in. Now make sure when you're cleaning these up that you clean these springs off right here of any rust or scoob that could be on them because the juice, you know, starts up here, but it, it's got a, yeah, that, that juice is flowing through the spring. Not this one, it's soldered to it, but this one over here. So make sure to, make sure to clean those. Now I wanna, I wanna hear what this thing sounds like. About 55% throttle. Now that our motor's happily running, Let's start to build this drive case down under here. Give our axles, of course, a little taste of oil. Oh yeah. Sure, since we're right here, let's check our gauge on our flanges. Oh yeah, this thing here, so dirty. I was busy scraping it out with a Q-tip trying to get it all the old grease in there. It looked like earwax, ew. That it remind me of that episode on Mythbusters when Grant and Mahara, they were gonna like make an earwax, yeah, okay. You remember that one. This drive shaft is plastic and all the other ones are metal. This is a smaller motor. I have yet to get the appropriate, if this is a newer motor or an older motor, because I can't, I can't find any motor that looks like this at HO Seeker, one of my favorite places for resources. I'm gonna put some of this grease, multi-purpose synthetic on this bushing end and on this end right here. We ain't got no, no thrust washers for this drive. So he's gonna go in. Back on this backside, there's this keeper. This is one of those, this feels like it's a fiber keeper, but it's one of those when you're pushing it on and if you launch it across the room, you're, you're done. I like to have a little, little bit of this grease on them drive gears down inside there. Give it a little bit and then we'll 
spin it, help spread that out. Put some down here. Doesn't need a bunch like that last wad that was in there. It was too much. Give these front guys some also. Now this has to be bolted in the frame before we can put the trucks, the side frames back on. With these little teeny tiny screws, there's the key. I had, of course, I had to put a little bend in it so my screwdriver can come straight down. Keep these guys nice and tight. These will eventually be pried on. I always love little little screws. It just reminds me of the, the good old days. When things were built. I know this plastic lock tab stuff. This thing was put together. Throw one in over here. And then this guy, pry it back into place. Bent out of shape like this. Because you got to get the axles in these holes and then you I guess put it straight again it's kind of how I took it off and I this is that was it it's like that's it so that's what the completed truck rear truck would look like front truck put the frame bolster in it's got different screws with the tapered head on them put the nuts up on the top here and these boy they're not they're not none extra too long they are just the minimum length they can be. This guy's gonna ride down underneath. And we got more of those little tiny dang screws for these side frames. When you're doing this, of course you're upside down and you can actually bolt these side frames on the, the wrong way. So we'll get this bolster screw put in here in the center just to hold everything. And you see the copper pickups over there. So you're gonna wanna put this one in, making sure that you got your wheels in correctly. And then there's going to be a significant amount of cussing while I get this together. Get the axles in the axle holes. Try to hold this whole kit and caboodle together. Line everything up. Oh, I'm really close now. All I gotta do is just get this little tiny screw in. Did I pull this off on the first shot? Are you kidding me? No, no way. Okay, so that's what this looks like. We'll give these guys just a little taste. I think we can almost put this part on the track. Coming through at about four volts, pulling half an amp. It's got kind of a nice little slow crawl right there. A little, little on the noisy side, but those straight cut gears, that's gonna, yeah, that'll make it happen, you betcha. Slow crawl, what are we doing here? We're doing about three volts. Oh, damn it, stalls out. Right there at about three volts. It is from 1945. October Halloween episodes been taking place all this month. This will be my fifth installment during October. Some guys got an extra paycheck this month too. <laughs> Double bonus. I got one last thing for October. Here before I started doing this, I wanted to be an aspiring filmmaker. I made this little video here back in October of 2019. It's only a minute long. You guys got a minute? Fits into my October special. Got a minute? Sit back. Light up a cigarette. Check it out. If you don't got a minute, scroll through it just a little bit. About a minute's worth. And then you won't have to sit through it. Getting started on this B unit, I've already cleaned all the wheel sets up. I didn't even know that both the wheels were brass till I cleaned them up. One of the problems that I've been suffering with is once I clean all these things up and then they sit on my shelf for a while, like months, and the brass tarnishes again. And then of course I gotta clean the wheels again in order to make the damn lo locomotive run right. I found out about this stuff right here. And it's supposed to kind of leave a coating behind on the brass to prevent it from tarnishing again. So I'm going to take a little bit, put it on this here Q-tip, and I'm going to give her 
give him a wipe. And I'm gonna, this is the first locomotive I've done this to, so this is a little test bed here to see if this is going to prevent it. Now you notice it said Inox on there, and there is a paste out there that's got the same name, Inox, that's kind of making its rounds. I think this might be the same stuff, same company doing the same thing i you know that's that's what i know i am just experimenting with this for you guys out there these axle pins right here you got to clean them up because that's how the juice flows through from the wheel to the axle to the axle to the side frames from the side frames into the frame there's, there's a lot going on to get that juice to flow so i'm trying to maximize my resistance by keeping this stuff from corroding again yeah, this has been sitting around for 40 years or more, but I just, I don't want to have to clean them up every couple months. And apparently when this just dries or it evaporates or I don't know what happens to it, it goes to heaven and then it just, it, it doesn't leave them greasy and slippery. It's supposed to leave them where they work. Getting on to assembling these frames. Now, of course, we're back down to messing with, messing with these little teeny tiny screws to bolt these frames together again. Premium carbon conductive grease. I... I'm going to try this stuff out on the end of these trucks. This little hole right in here is where the axle rides. So instead of oiling it, I'm going to try some of this grease and see if this will keep the corrosion down. These wheel sets, when you look at them, you'll see that one end is insulated right there. So that means this wheel is the pickup wheel. So you gotta make sure that you've got those both go in the same direction. And then of course you gotta have the polarity correct when it's on the locomotive. This is gonna be another fun example of needing 13 hands, a bunch of new cuss words, trying to figure out to get these all put together. Sure, yeah, oh, get the hole lined up, fight putting in the bolt. Remember fellas, this is brass. So if you don't get it started straight, it's gonna go in crooked and if it's hard to screw in, you're stripping it out. Should we check our gauge? Sure. To clean this armature, we're just going to take this spring right here out of the way and we'll, we'll get the brush out of the way. We'll get in here with some mineral spirits, try to clean up the grease that's on there. Oh, sure. And we'll follow it up with the fiberglass pencil just to give it a little polish it in there. So we'll put our brush back in shape, put this spring back in. This one's got a wick up in the front here also. So we'll saturate that wick with some oil for a reserve. Give it a couple tastes on the, each end of the armature. Get this gear cleaned. This never made it into the ultrasonic cleaner, so I kind of neglected to clean it. We're gonna take one of these motor blocks. We're gonna put the non-conductive pivot bar on it. It's bent from the weight of the locomotive all these years, so I'm gonna put it on upside down so it'll bend the other direction. This is our brass motor spacer. Putting the top of the motor case on. Put this little screw in down here. It screws into the bottom of the motor bracket assembly. Get our spacer bar in there. Start to snug all this stuff up. Get our magnet bolt in. So, so far this is starting to come together. Pivot still pivots. Back to our multi-purpose synthetic grease. This, this has got thrust washers. There's two of them right there, just like they're supposed to be. I couldn't be happier, so we are going to make sure that they are lubricated. And then the shaft underneath this bushing, of course, needs to be lubricated. Because this sits in there like that. We've got one for the back side also. And that's going to sit in there like so. We're going to give these gears a little taste of this grease. I got a little ahead of myself there. We got to bolt this into the chassis first. This notch, it's set forward. That's the front because you know, it's hard to tell just by looking at it. This motor faces forward like this and it comes in from the bottom and it's electrically isolated from the chassis. We're gonna use these little brass, little brass machine bolts. One here, one here, plus nuts for the top of the frame. This wire wants to be bolted down to this side of the frame. Let's see if this old girl's gonna spin for us. Oh yeah. This front bolster, this piece goes towards the front. These guys, go towards the back. This little screw here, tapered head goes in this side here. And then this hex, brass hex nut goes up above. And crank that down real tight because it's got a little little bushing to keep that from getting too tight. Bolts on underneath the frame, the nuts that go up here on the top. This is what she looks like so far. Both trucks being able to pivot. Now we can go back to our drive line, going right in there. This is going to sit here like this. Grease up these brass gears. Just some. Spin this around to help disperse the stuff. Make sure it gets spread around. Slip on one of these plates. A couple of these long screws like this. 
and that power truck is put back together. So I've got my pickup wheels over here, my pickup wheels over here, which are matching the locomotive. And this is what she'll look like when it's all done. Everything's cleaned up, wheels are looking beautiful, motor's in correctly, oh, but I gotta find some sort of something for a driveline right in here, cause I don't, it, it didn't have one. And these front wheels, they won't turn with that drive, drive shaft, helical drive shaft in there. So we gotta make, we gotta make this spin. I tried my best to make a drive line out of this flexible tube right here, but it's, it's too thick walled. So I couldn't, it caused everything to bind up. So I had to pull this drive line out of the front so that these wheels would free spin. So until I can scare up a, you know, one day find a drive line for this old Varney, this is only gonna be a four wheel drive instead of an eight wheel drive. Let's take it to the track and see how it runs around. This one came around real nice. And it's substantially quieter than that first A unit that I put together. This has got the brass gears in there instead of plastic. How's its creep speed? Uh-huh. My. 2.5 volts, half an amp. Oh, that's a nice creep. 1945 right there. I. Wow. Look at them numbers. Can it go even lower? Nope. 2.5. Trying this out. There's no couplers between this A and this B unit. Seeing how they how they would run. That is matched really quite good. Nobody's running away from the other one. Nope. Oh, yeah. I am surprised. I guess it's time to get some couplers on these things now. I wonder if I can get some Katie's to fit. Well, I've been toying around with you enough now. Let's do a reveal of this thing. Let's let's bring bring the whole damn thing out. Come on. the rest of it's out huh somehow i managed to pick a scheme out that micro decals they're they're completely out out of them they maybe they're on a container ship coming over from japan i don't know but i can't get them i can't ebay them i can't google them i can't find this decal set that i need right here what is this what is this number number 87 dash 90 burlington 1944 to 1970 f units this will be a two-part video. First part is getting it this far along. Second part will be as we're making it even more nicer looking. Thank you guys so much for watching part one. I'm Ron. It's Classic Model Trains. Bye-bye.